Hi there, this is Mandy. Um, this is voice recording number six. I have to keep starting because, you know, we're in a pandemic. Everybody's home. There's a lot of family noise in the background. Uh, so please bear with me. Um, it is what it is. And hopefully it won't be too distracting. And hopefully I won't need to start over yet again. Anyway. I went urban sketching with the Newport News Urban Sketchers last weekend. We went out to Air Power Park in Virginia, um, in Hampton actually in Virginia. It was really, really cold so we were grateful that the parking lot overlooks part of the exhibition. My steering wheel lap tray that you can see there um, touches perfectly, holds nice and still, quite steady. There is another video that talks about that in a little more detail. Um, I've yet to do a full review on it, but so far I love it. It makes car sketching an, an absolute breeze. Anyway, here you can see I am using my mechanical pencil to map out my sketch. At this point I'm not concerned with adding too much detail. I'm working on proportion and placement, making sure that things are pointing in the right direction and that the sketch works. Um, once I'm happy with my sketch, I start to add some colour. Here I'm using the Derwent pan um, paints, they're graphite tint paints, so it's graphite with colour. And I'm finding the muted shades really work well for winter, fall, winter. I think uh, come the summer I want something a little brighter, but right now these are hitting all the write notes for me. One of the things I really quite like about the graphite tint paint pans is it's very easy to mix colours. As you can see here, I'm changing up the green um, to denote a different tree. and. In order to make my trees, I'm not going nuts trying to find each branch and each uh, leaf. There's a lot of evergreens back there. Um, I'm just trying to map out the shape, leave a few gaps and just suggest the trees. Uh, I will come back later on with a pen and um, go over that as you'll see. decided for the actual exhibition pieces I wanted to use my ink tense pencils as you can see when you activate the color with water the, the color is just vibrant um, it really pops off the page and since most of the objects in the exhibition are white or gray or shades of gray uh, I felt like this was a good option because I did want to have some color in there and um, this, I find these very versatile, they're very easy to mix as long as the ink is still wet and it, it worked, it worked really well for um, my intention. Um, as you can see, mixing this purple with the blue added a really pretty um, shadow colour right there on the fins. I, I was quite happy with the outcome. You'll see here I used the pencil to lay down colour directly onto the page and then activated it. And then for the um, mix 
I used my paintbrush there to pick up color from the uh, the nib and I did that because uh, when when you're adding uh, ink tense um, pencils to a wet surface you do run the risk of having far more color much more vibrancy than you really wanted in the first place so it's um I find for me that's a really good way to control that The piece that this, um, I, I guess it's a kind of a missile of some sort, um, is sitting on, is that, was actually in a very dark shadow, and I didn't really want to add too much detail under there. I, I wanted the focus to be on the white thing with the fins. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's there. Um, and so I decided I was just going to keep it very dark, very basic, um, minimal detail, and uh, it, it worked for this. Um, I didn't feel it was necessary to, to paint every last part of it. Here you can see I'm using a Tombow brush pen. I have two, one black, one gray, and it was easier to add the finer detail, uh, like lettering and those little squares um, with the pens. And it, just to make some, you know, add some line work. I like these brush pens because they're as good as a fine liner, but you can get a variation of in line weight if you want to, um, just by simply pressing down on the nib as you make your line. Um, I don't believe I, I did that in this particular sketch, but the option's there. I decided that the trees needed something a little finer for those branch um, shapes up there. So I switched to, uh, I believe that's a 0.5 nib. Uh, I'm not sure of the brand of pen, but it makes a nice clean line and it's waterproof. So, you know, those are my two criteria really. I have no, <laughs> no real favorites when it comes to fine liners. So I needed to ground my plane and um, the rocket and this missile in the front. So it's time to add some um, shadow underneath. Oh, and the fin thing there that I forgot to add uh, earlier. So I'm just going in with a very, very thin wash, very fine wash of just graphite. It's just 
black graphite and uh, it just adds a little life. I feel like shadows really help with um, not just grounding, they just make things look a little bit more, a bit more realistic really. And I go in and add using the same, exactly the same thing, not really diluting it too much, straight to the paper, uh, just to add some um, background there and show it was actually very dark there in the bushes and the hedges and this works fine. I decided early on when I was mapping out my sketch that I didn't really need to draw in my lamp post at that point but I could take care of it once I'd finished um, working on the plane and making sure all that was exactly as I wanted it to look um, and so now I can go back with uh, the Tombow brush pen here and take care of that in and then I won't need to, you know, erase any lines because inevitably I will draw, <laughs> my lines will not always match up and, you know, erasing. That's just another step. I wanted to brighten up some of the highlights that I'd left and make sure that they are actually visible as white. So I'm using a Signo Broad gel pen. Uh, it's, the trick to these is making sure the um, surface that you're using them on is completely dry. Otherwise, the color just kind of sinks in and disperses with the water. Um, all you end up with is um, a more diluted pigment on your page so uh, thankfully uh, while it's cold it's things have dried really quick so I was able to go in and make short work and of the uh, highlights and it just brings it just adds a real pop I feel to the uh, the whole sketch just adds a little more dimension when I started out, I wasn't sure if I was going to add any colour to the sky because it was really quite a cold, dull day. Um, but by the time, you know, I'm painting, the, you can see the sun is shining. It was quite pretty, so I decided to go ahead. I'm using ink tent blocks that I had previously cut down and jammed into uh, pans, half pans there, and they're magnetised on the back. And they just sit in this little tin and they're, they're just easy to carry around and it's just another way to use your ink tanks blocks take them out urban sketching uh, without having to cart around a flimsy tin and a full block i can still take them out of the pan and use them like a little pastel if i wanted to do i find that i don't though i just don't Here's my finished sketch. I was quite happy with the way it came out. I added the location, the group I was with, and the date in that blank space. I um, hope you enjoyed my video. If you feel so inclined, subscribe and like. Thank you.